pieces It's hard to carry on When you're a field All alone Now I've swung back down again It's worse than it was before If I had seen such riches I could live away Even sorry about that. My technical problem. I cocked it up, and uh, I, I, was, I had two streams going at the same time. So I do apologise for that. Matty, thanks for coming on, bro. We're going to dissect this absolute crap show we are seeing right now. Lee, mate, Kenny. You know, last night, great emergency meeting. We took it apart. It, it, it. You can't make it up anymore, can you? Um, seriously. I, and I'm going to just ask this question, Kenny. I'm going to come to you. You, you, you go week in, week out, mm. right? Is challenging or winning, which is acceptable? W winning has to be the way because the fact is, right, is that a lot of people, we've got to stop people from celebrating getting close to City because getting close to City doesn't mean winning trophies. All it means is that you're finishing second to City and you're probably taking it into maybe the penultimate week of the season or you take or you take it into April is not good enough to compete with City because at the end of the day teams who only compete with the best unless they um don't you know like I said eradicate their weaknesses and you know maximize their strengths and buy their strong then what will happen they'll fall away it's a natural progression in football you know there are going to be a situations where certain big clubs are going to get it right we don't know what's going to go on with Liverpool but the biggest fear, and a football football's Achilles heel always for me, is if Man United ever get it right, and you laugh at Man United at the present, and you're entitled to do that because they have been a shambles since Sir Alex left. But history shows that when they get it right, none of no one can be able to compete. We won't be able to compete, and City probably won't be able to compete. So, we when if teams do get it right. We're not going to be City's only competitors. There's going to be other teams compete compete with City, and if we stand still, which we've done in the last two years, then we're just going to fall by the wayside. We're going to be back to the Wenger days of being at your fourth, because you know time doesn't still stand still in the Premiership. You know, all right, we're in the Champions League, but you know, day money talks. There's going to be a situation where we're going to go and bid in wars. That's the thing. What really upsets me now is that. I don't think we're strong enough to go in bidding wars. We either do our business early or miss out again. Because trust me, we come to um, July, I promise you, we're going to get a couple of um, signings. Fans are going to get excited. And when it gets to 10, I'll probably have Ray one in. But it won't do anything to, to um, eradicate the weaknesses down the left hand side. And it won't be a striker. I didn't, you know what I mean? We. And what will happen? We have a great start to the season. Then come this time um, next year, 2025, same old thing. Players being um, overworked, the bench not being good enough, and then we fall by the wayside. At the end of the day, mate, all is great. It's brilliant. Five nils, six nils, blah, 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 blah. It's brought us nothing as we see. Of course, it has. As, I mean, Lee, you know. We debated this to a, to, we, you know, to a great depth yesterday, last night, yeah? You know, I'm sorry. I, I, I see people telling me, you know, there's a, a, a YouTuber last night we debated with. Big up to Egal. Fair play to you, friend, for coming on. Challenging is one thing. Winning is another. I do not want, Lee, I do not want this anymore. I'm fed up with it. I'm fed up to the back teeth of this, right? I'm being told. But it's okay because we're challenging. Bullshit, man. This is a football club, and a football club is there to win. Fact. fact. Yeah, fact. Wait, I want to I want to read this stat out. I want to read this. Arsenal in all competitions by month under Mikel Artel. 
and it goes through every single month, right? In the win percentage, I'll give you the wins, the draws, the losses, right? Our best month under this manager since he's been here is September. 17 games he's managed in September in the four and a half years. 14 wins, one draw, two losses. 82% um, win record. May, 16 games, 11 wins, one draw, four losses, 68.8%. March, 21 wins, sorry, 21 games, 14 wins, five draws, two losses, 66.7. October, 25 games, 16 wins, five draws, four losses, 64%. November, 19 games, two, uh, sorry, 12 wins, one draw, six losses, 63.2. July, I'm not even going to bother doing it in July and August, uh, sorry, July and June, this point is, um, they're pre-season. Um, February, 25 games, 15 wins, three draws, seven losses, 60%. August, 15 games, nine wins, three draws, three losses. December, 28 games, 14 wins, four draws, 10 losses, 50%. January, 26 games, 12 wins, eight draws, six losses, 46.2% win record. Ready for it? We've missed April, guys. Hmm. 22 games in April as manager. Seven wins, six draws, nine losses, 31.8% win record in April. Yeah, almost like it's a fucking recruitment issue. No cover for the center backs, no cover for Reese Nelson, no cover for Odegaard, no striker. Yeah, so he has to keep flogging these players to death. Yeah, I was watching a bit of Potts earlier. Yeah, he was on with, I think he was on with LB. I think it was LB. Yeah, it was. And um, he said that we've got seven players that have played over 40 games this season. Man City have got none. <laughs> what can you do? Yes, damn it. What can you do, man? Matty, go on, bro. I mean, that's, that's, you know. That's a damn step. That's a damn step, y'all. Seven. He's been here five years. And in April, he can only get seven wins. And, and we fall apart. It, it, it plays right in line. We fall. You, Lee, you said September, it was out of this world. August, out of this world. October, out of this world. But yeah. when you get to that back end of that se- back end of the season, Lee, what do you see? Draws, losses, ties. When it counts. When it counts. Last night, last night was absolutely dejecting as an Arsenal fan. It was dejecting. Because you see really how far we are away. Because, see, this we're back in that Champions League now. So this is the measuring stick. You you see how far we are from this vaunted, so-called bad Bayern Munich teams. Look how far away we are from them. I told you last night, Lee, before we went to bed, I said, any team that played on Tuesday night, regardless if they won or lost, would turn this team over. Come, Jess. Any team. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I don't care what it what, what it looks like to, to the eyes. I'm telling you what I know. We saw it last night. We saw it when Bayern Munich decided. We we sat there last night, Lee. And we we listened to Stuart Robson, and he literally said the exact same thing. We we didn't even we just watched the interview Cole. We didn't know what he was gonna say, and he literally said the same exact thing that we've been saying. We sat up and watched the yard man. Cole didn't know what he was gonna say. Said the same exact thing that we have been saying. We would just, so we're not crazy. We're not crazy. It's time time for a change. Something has to change. People woke up this morning. I got up. The very first thing I did, I rolled over. I said, let me see what's going on over here at Arsenal. Drop it in the chat. Just like clockwork. Get your new outfits. Get your new outfits. Happy birthday, Vocek. Happy birthday. We just got put out of a European club uh, uh, competition. This is when the one. This is in the in line of one of the worst weeks of football we've had up under this manager. One of the worst. And it, our football club decides they want to put out a new a new merch line. You can't make yeah. it, man. Let's show you how far. Let's show you how far gone. And celebrating ex players' birthdays, by the way. That's well, enough of that. Enough of that. What is that about? 
Jazz, they weren't even celebrating them when they were here. This yeah. is new. <laughs> this is new. It's 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 the it's the CBBS. I'll tell you one thing that who I, the PR guy um, from the club has to be you know a freelancer who actually retard, does PR. That's stuff. what he is. Well, yeah, that as well. But he he, he, he must have um, like I said, the, he either has a twin brother or he does um, freelance work for anyone with pay him. So I saw something similar with the fan camps. They celebrate players birthdays now. The reason why they, they're doing it is that they try, they think they need to educate Arsenal fans about certain players. I mean, a few days ago, I saw Mustafi's birthday getting celebrated. So, and it, and I, and, I, and even to this day, the Real Madrid do this, Kenny. The, I don't. I think Modric is the only one I've ever seen them wish out, and Rudiger. Other than that, I've never seen them do it. Do they celebrate George Graham's birthday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 I think the club will. But I think the club will because the reasons that you know they they can't they can't do anything else. But I think when you look at these these players, the birthdays get celebrated and all that, it's space. It's forced. It's forced passion for the club. It's basically you know forced history teachers saying, "Oh yeah, we want to let everyone know that yeah we're we're on it and we're in tune with um, the club's history because everyone accuses us of just supporting the club from um, the Wenger days or supporting the club from um, you know with Aubameyang and, like, and um, you know Lacazette. We want to show that we're top top goonies. So we're all we're going to remember everyone's birthday. So what they do is they you know they get their encyclopedia or their thesaurus as a dry. I want the birth. I want the date of birth of every Arsenal player. That's ever played in the last like 50 or 60 years, and that's what happens, you know. And it seems like the the fan camps um, are doing the same thing. But then again, I've been saying it since, um, you know, um, that all for nothing documentary. The fan camps of the club, they might as well be the same thing. They're very much in tune with each other. For anyone um, from the club or anyone from the fan camps to say anything else is it's just pure nonsense. You're in it together. You know, you've you've told the line, and the club are very pleased for you. Hence the fact that, you know, some of you do get involved, so, you know, invited to certain things. And at the end of the day, it's a win-win thing. The 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 fan camps owe the club for giving them some sort of creed, um, sort of um, respectability. And the club owe the fan camps because the fan camps do their job for them. You know, the fan camps, you know, like I said, their reach goes for the all four corners of the of the earth. Of the world, so you know the club do love um, to spread the Arsenal diaspora and AFTV or the fan cams as I call them do that for them. So they're a good what I call a good partnership, a very very a good partnership that isn't going to be broken. So yeah, I just want to. I'm, I'm going to ask Lee a question. I've got to start. I want to ask Lee this. I'm a couple of super chats, man. Dow Oregon Guna, man. Um, thank you, mate, for your super chat. Arteta has lost the plot. It's time to go. Absolutely. Couldn't disagree with that any more than you, bro. Uh, Amar says, uh, thank you for your super chat, bro. Still can't get over Saka not beating the first man for that corner in the last second of the game. Fact. Absolute facts, man. Also, you we, we, We've been clipped more. up on that, mate, as well, by the way. <laughs> oh, he's talking about, oh, no, he's talking about the corner, the corner get... Yeah, somebody's yeah, clipped it up yeah, and put it yeah. out. <laughs> Long head, yeah, you man. Yeah, Thank you. To me. I want to see that. Sit next to me. I want to see that. We're gonna, uh, mm. we're gonna, be, are we all gonna sit here, mate, and uh, come on, guys, cheer up and sing North London forever? Are we gonna do that? No, 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 no. Uh, unique, no, mate. Remember, for wait, wait till next Tuesday. Wait till next Tuesday against Chelsea. Wait till next yeah, Tuesday. Did, did, you notice, oh. um, did you notice the atmosphere at the beginning of the Bayern game? There was none of this North London forever or. And yeah, oh, that crowd yeah, was yeah, proper fireworks, yeah, yeah. smoke. It was like yeah. proper atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Oh. I've been getting online abuse from Arsenal fans for speaking the truth. Well, yeah, we get it all the time. Our yeah. fan base. I don't worry, man. I'll, I'll call them out every day. Every single one, every single mm. football fan out there. Every time I open YouTube, yeah, there's a new fan that doesn't support Arsenal. Yeah, a new channel or whatever it may be that I've never seen before don't support Arsenal, telling me Arsenal are scary. Rise up, they're gonna rise. Yeah, we're gonna why, rise why, up. Lee, Lee, why are you so angry? This, this guy wants to know why you're so angry. Bro, do you know what? I'm actually the most chilled person on the planet, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah as soon as I talk, talk about this football club, since I talk about this football club, I turn into a monster, mate. <laughs> That's yeah. And if you think I'm angry, you wait till my boy Jolien comes on this channel at some point. 
Yeah, because if you think I'm angry and I'm negative and I'm toxic and I'm this and that, I am 1% of what he is about Arsenal. Yeah? I'm very yeah. filtered, very diluted, yeah, compared to, to how he speaks about this club. Yeah. I man. think uh, my, my, my question is... Did, did you block that guy. He's spamming. Somebody block that guy out there. The Terminator 298, he's a spamming um, out there. And I, I don't want that shit in my channel so you can just do one. Um yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. question, right? Question. Saka and Havertz, man, the last couple of three games, they have been poor. Saka mm. looked to me yesterday. I mean, he, he looked like he when he started, even when he started the game, he looked like he was limping. This guy, to me, is burnt. He's done. He's gone. He's finished. Right? End of. Because Matty, I, I I didn't see in anything out of him yesterday. I didn't see anything out of him against uh, Villa. Yet the, this manager keeps playing him, keeps playing him, keeps playing him, keeps playing him. How long can you play a player right that is not one hundred percent? It to me, it doesn't make sense, man. I mean, the the thing the thing about it is is that. You got two combo, two combinations. You got soccer falls off at the end of the year every year. Mm. That, that used to be getting discussed, and then you've got a, a a percentage of him injured. We know he's injured in there somewhere, so we know that's there. Yeah. And then we'll go back to what we've all said all along: is he refused to buy any cover for this gentleman because Reese Nelson mm. is not it. Reese Nelson was never was 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 never gonna 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 be able to, to come in and cover for him like that. And so basically, you riding around you riding down the interstate on ball tires, mm. hoping that you can stop. And that's and that's what's happened. He he's ran into the ground. He's out of he's bang out of form. That corner last night showed you where his mind is. That corner last night showed you where it's at. And then you saw that, you that, saw, that corner ranks up there. With <laughs> Thomas Whitey's shot. Do you remember that shot he had? Out yeah, the state, yeah, 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 and and and, and like Northside said last night, he's been pegged. Everybody knows what to do. We're gonna we're, we're gonna him and Martinelli. We're gonna drop drop players over as soon as they come in. Here's the player shift over. And there you go. Mm. You know, I, I you know, not, and, and last night we heard a narrative Lee where people now people are finally admitting what we were saying last week. Because you remember last week we were chastised. Oh, well, man, how can y'all say that? He was fouled. He was fouled. He was fouled. What did you hear last night, Lee? What were you hearing last night? He should have stayed on his feet. Mm. He should have stayed on his feet. Maybe we could have got maybe we could have got something. Yep. See, people can play this game and act like they, you want you want to be in with the in crowd all you want. One thing we know for sure is the facts are the facts. Mm. And the facts of the matter are. We we are not where we need to be. Soccer's not where he's regressing. This is why I call him Billy Jean. It's because mm. he's moonwalking. He's going backwards. Mm. Martinelli. Most of these players, and I said the same thing we said. I said last night. I was, and I was mean is most of these players are going into their prime or in their prime, mm. and they've been fast tracked into it because we have a manager. Who does not know how to cultivate players? You look at Martin, you look at uh Carlos Ancelotti last night. You look at Pep. These managers cultivate players. They cultivate players. So uh, somebody mentioned, I heard this before I went to bed last night. Somebody said, Well, why is why is the goalkeeper taking penalty kicks over at Man City? And I said, What did you see? Did you see him take the penalty? <laughs> <laughs> did you see that? And that's, that's the goalkeeper coming up there taking penalties like that. Because they go over this stuff. Our players, our I, I've long said this about Mikel Arteta, and people thought I was crazy. He lucks up on a lot of stuff. He lucked up on soccer in, in Emma Smith Row. He's lucked up. He lucked up in that game this year when it was a looting, where, where everybody was jumping around and celebrating. The cameras coming out and, and and all this stuff. He lucks up in this stuff, and when the luck runs out, uh, mm -hmm. he looks he looks like a complete fool. And like last night, he stood there. He looked like a complete fool standing next to uh, to to, uh, to Tuko, who everybody mm. picks on. He's leaving, by the way. He's leaving. This is a manager on the way out the door, going to a semifinal. It, 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 and that's the thing. This Tuko, 
every club he's for the last four years, he's been fired. He got fired from um, PSG because he couldn't win the Champions League. A year later, he won the Champions League with Chelsea. <laughs> and you know, won the club, the Euro- European Super Cup. Oh, club. That look good, yeah, he got fired because he couldn't win the Champions League. The club he went to, he the next he after he wins it. So, like, this is a guy, this is a guy, right? That who, because he who actually has the same sort of um shelf life as normal managers, there's no there's no um trust to process of crucial. He basically yeah. comes in, you know, like I said. You know, gives the club a bit of injection of um, confidence. Wins, wins the trophies, and then, you know, when when, when they think that it's not happening, they get rid of him. And he understands that. But this guy has got gets time and time to build something. But we actually don't know what he's building. What because the other day, if he's actually built something, we we were having a situation where um you know he's looking at his bench and you're thinking All right Smith Rowe. We sing songs about Smith Rowe. Oh, you didn't get on. Tos Party, our best player last year, because he's been over um worked last season. Oh yeah, he's too tired for this game. So so you don't play him. Rich Nelson didn't even get a sniff. Didn't even get a sniff. It says a lot that Fabio Vieira he, started five games since he joined yeah, started yeah, five yeah, league games since he signed for us. Yeah before before anyone like blames um you know um other managers or or other regimes let's not forget the buzzword was always as long as this guy Gets his own players, watch him cook. Well, he's got his own players. You know, he's got complete control over his squad. You know, and that's the thing. People look at the first team, they don't look at the squad. The squad is the f- responsibility of the manager. Now, if that squad's not good enough to, you know, affect games, that's on him. That's on him. You know, if he, if he really has this power and he really, really is this, this coach, how comes we're always, we're pointing out these, these weak areas and he's doing nothing about it? Sinchenko was a problem last season, especially when we got it came to the business end of the season. Did nothing about it. Oh, we got Timber. Oh, Timber Sinchenko's replacement. Who are you kidding? The guy's not a left back. He only, he only played left back in the community shield and then not in the forest because Sinchenko was injured. This bullshit hey, hey, about Hey Kenny, don't forget, don't forget Thomas Party was at right back at the beginning yeah, of the season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, last season he finished, he finished it right back last season, and then he started this season as right back because he, Kenny, he, I, I, I want to ask this question to I, I, I'm gonna ask you, Lee, as well. Right? Enough is enough is enough. Hmm. Okay, when you look at what we've got on that bench, yeah, it looked a little bit better. We had a few players come back from injury. Our, 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 our midfield last night needed definitely shoring up. I thought our midfield was very poor. Mm. Yeah. Rice didn't have a great game. Yeah. And Jorginho, I'm sorry, mate, your legs are burnt. Yeah. Why did he not bring on party? But the fact is, man, in this summer, this is my worry. This is my big, mm. big worry. We know, we all know Arteta is going to be here next season, and we go again, rinse and repeat, same old journey, yeah, let's throw the FA Cup in the bin, Lee, let's throw the Carabao Cup in the bin, Mm. yeah, yeah, a a cup we should challenge for, because at the end of the day, we're shit at competing anywhere else, Mm. yeah, we'll be back in the Champions League, yeah, right, we've got players on that bench that are not good enough, what's happened to Vieira, Thirty-five million pound we pay for him. Mm. Thirty-five million pounds. Where is he? Right, and we've got ESR. Yeah, Nelson. I mean, I'm sorry, Enketia. Why in dear God did you bring him on with four minutes to go? Four minutes to go. What are you going to do? It, it, and that's the thing. You bring him with four minutes to go, and you don't get the, you don't get the ball in advanced areas quickly to him. So what's the point of having him in there? What's he going to do? No, you've got no service. You're chasing the game and buy him a comfortable. And, that, and that's the thing. I said to you off air that the biggest myth of all wasn't, wasn't, wasn't us. It was actually the scoreline in, in the, between us. Both. That 3-2 scoreline was a myth. It wasn't close. Both games were not close. We, we cultivated an equaliser. And the scoreline flattered us last week. Well, yesterday, the scoreline flattered us. There's a gulf between on the way and buying and this young, talented squad. And that's the problem. That's why we're angry, is because 
We suspected that. But we didn't want to believe it because, you know, we were seeing this great football and we thought, right, these guys are going to have the mentality to, um, you know, get over the line in big games and deal with the pressure situations that you get in after um, Easter Monday. But once again, we've improved right. And that's what pisses really pisses all of us off because at the end of the day, we've been lured in and thinking they're going to change. But they just haven't got the mentality. And I think it comes from the manager. The manager himself can talk a good game, but he ain't got the mentality. He doesn't know what to do when the pressure's <laughs> really, really on. He is, in effect, a very good number two that has managed to get lucky to get a, a job as a number one. And he's only going to take us so far. Everyone knows this. It's with the exception of people who just don't want to see it. Everyone knows that this is as good as in the get with Arteta, but to take us this next level to help us win trophies, we need to get a big name in. Fact, Lee. I'm sorry. You know, uh, my worry is this. Right, we've got. You know, we gave Enketia number four in shirt, hundred grand a week. We don't play him. He's not good enough. Yeah. We've got players on that bench, Lee, that just are not the levels for this club. I like, I think five or six of them should go straight away. El Nenny can go because he doesn't get played. What's the point? Yeah. We but we spent 35 million on Fabio Vieira. We don't see him. Why? Because he's not good enough. They've got to go. But I don't have the confidence, Lee, in the club to replace all that lot in the summer. I don't. Mate, I'm, I'm, I'm just reading this tweet from that Rory Talks bullshit. Yeah, another weird off-key individual. And, and this ties in with what we're saying here, yeah? You can't simultaneously slate half of our squad for not being good enough and then want the manager out when we're only two points off City in the league and went out at the same stage in the Champions League. Either Arteta's underperforming with the squad or the squad isn't good enough. Not both. Who built the squad, Eo de Puta? Yeah, who built the squad? Who got Eddie and Katia's deal? Who got Reese's deal? Fact. Yeah, come on, what are we doing here? Ben White got a new deal. El Nene. Tommy Atkins got a new deal. He signed both of these, by the way, and then gave him a new deal. El Nene. Who signed Cedric? He did. Every single player in that squad he signed, pretty much. And if he hasn't signed them, he signed them up to a new deal. Mohamed El Nene. Hmm. Signed him up to a new deal. Did. When he was injured as well, by the way. Yeah, we was going to get rid of him, apparently. But then all I kept hearing was, oh, no, he's going to be fast-tracked into the coaching side. That's why we gave him the new deal. And he's good to have around the dressing room and he's going to be a coach for us. Cool. How comes he's linked to all these Turkish clubs then? Because that's another lie. Another lie I'll tell you about as well. Martinelli. Martinelli. Do you remember when he had six months sat on the bench? And we were all going mad. Why is he sat on the bench? He's fit. He's ready to play. Barely see him. And Chris Wheatley, James Benj, Charles Watts, and all the other journo puppets out there that ain't even journos. They're just wrongins pandering for a free VIP pass. Yeah. We're all tweeting out a video clip of Martinelli scoring a screamer in training as a striker. And Chris Wheatley posted that out and said, this is why he's not been playing. Mikel Arteta is developing him into a striker. How many times has he played striker since then? Because that was two and a half years ago. He's always on the left wing. Yeah, it's rubbish. I'm sick and tired of it, man. Every single year is boring, mate. Every single year, we know what we're going to get. We're going to get some great football. We're going to look amazing. And then we're going to fold. And every time we play someone, we're better than everyone. Our players are better than theirs. They're going to shoehorn in all these players into combined 11s against Man City and Bayern and Madrid. What did what did Stuart Roster say last night? What did he say to the, the biggest? What what did he say last night? He said Arsenal get o- over emotional, think they can take on everybody, think, yep. they think they can run the show, think they can just do what they want to do when they play, and they end up. He was laughing when he said it. It turned yep. it, it turned it turned around, and we always get put out of competition. Yeah, he said too emotional, and it's spot on. And this is the problem: these players believe their own hype. Name me another club in world football the size of Arsenal's that would allow a manager to go four years without winning anything and there is zero fucking pressure on him from the fan base. There ain't one. The only people that are moaning about it are people like us. Yeah, and we're in a tiny percentage. Yeah, I'd say 
I'd say out of all the ones online, and I'm just guessing because I don't speak or see all of them, I'd say there's probably about 5% of fans online that want him out. The other 95, yeah, are sitting there. Some of them would be a little bit like mm, very upset. They'll put their feelings out, oh, the season's over, but I don't want him to go, yeah? But most of that 95% still want him. But who can we get this better? Somebody who's one saying, mate, yeah? I know. How about go and get Man City's assistant? There you go. Is that, that you, Because that, that Man City assistant was part of a treble winning team. We're toxic, Lee. We're toxic. Yeah. Guy tells this manager that we got, he was only part of uh, like a domestic treble. This assistant helped Pep get a, a, a proper treble. So maybe we should go and get him. Would anyone take Man City's assistant as the next manager? Because it seems to work for Altair. Absolute rubbish. And do you know how this... This is how you know this fan base is so far gone. It is crazy. When he got linked to the job, there was no uproar. When he got the job, there was no uproar. And then the audacity of this bastard to sit there uh, two days before we gifted City a title when we lost to Forest and wheel out a dog called Win, and not anyone in this fan base went mad. No. Not one journalist said a word to him. No. Nope. Fact. Why have you called it Win, Mikel? He went, because I like winning. Okay, well, how comes you're about to hand the title to City after bottling it then? Not one person said this. Nobody's, all it was is, oh, what a beautiful dog. Oh, you're beefing with a dog. No, it's the concept. And this is how you know that they can get away with putting tweets like that out last night. It's how you know they can drop the merch again today. It's how you know they can do other stuff. <laughs> because they know the fans lap it up. Yeah. Some and we're just, we're just, a, no, 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 look at the, oh, just a mouthy minority over there. Just go and sit down and be quiet. But what they've done is they've finessed everybody into thinking you can't speak up. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are our tetra out that don't say it. Yep. Yeah, because they see the abuse we get. Yeah, and they don't want that abuse online. Maybe they, they don't, the maybe they can't act it, maybe they don't want it. I don't know. They ain't got the yeah, products. That's for fact. But I don't give a shit to be fair. I don't care what it's just words on the screen. Words on the screen and reality are two different things. Fact. Absolutely. I totally agree. Um Rod says, please stop flashing the effing messages. Mate, if people put a message in, I'll show them because that's what people come in to do. And when you've got yeah, like, cool. a load of I'll messages, you, you know, I I'll, 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 how about you set up a channel and show us how it's done, mate? How about that? <laughs> you know, because I'm trying to show the messages. That people, Who are these people? People come here to watch. flashing people's, people's messages, messages up on screen so their messages can be seen. Piss you off. You call them mutants, I call them goblins, man. Ghouls. These ghouls. <laughs> the end of the day, Who are these people? people? Who do they think they are, bro? Get out of here. How much are you for TV or something, man? It, mm -hmm. it costs nothing to come here and watch this. I've got three great panelists on here, probably some of the best you'll ever bloody get, right? And I will show the messages because at the end of the day, if people have got respect to the channel, they put their questions in, they put mm -hmm. them in their comments, and I will show them. I'm sorry if you don't like it, but it's my channel, and I will do whatever I like. Sorry here, here. about that. Sorry here, here. about that. But here, here. I, Kenny, I, 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 I had this today, right? I had mm. this today. Somebody contacted me and, and, and said, you're just, you, you, you're just horrible. You're toxic. Um, mm. Why, why yeah, do you even bother, bother watching, the, watching the team? Um, and I said, right, yeah, okay, fair enough. You mm. go home and away don't you well no i go to all the home games fair play mm. then why the fuck are you walking out on 86 minutes and you're telling me, <laughs> you're telling mm. me to trust the process and yet you yeah. go every game you you walk out on 86 minutes and i said don't lie to me mm. i said don't lie to me about it because i know where you sit in that ground yeah and i could see the cannon when you'd pissed mm. off at 86 minutes so don't tell me how to support my team. Don't tell me to trust mm. this process. Kenny, you're there week in, week out. Mm. It, I, I, I honestly, I, I have to give you respect because at the end of the day, I don't know how you don't lose it because at the end of the day, I would lose it. We, we, we all lose it in the ground. We all lose it in the ground. We all, we all come to that conclusion. We all say the same things. You know, I do. You know, I still like. You know, very much look look forward to my uh, match day. You know, Arsenal football clubs been in my family f since I, since since I was a boy. You know, my mum's a was a massive Arsenal fan. My brother's an Arsenal fan. 
you know, and I, I come from the Arsenal area. It was only ever going to be Arsenal. But the situation is, is that, as I said before, we've all we've all had that affiliation to the club where we have we've ha- we've all been deluded supporters. We've all been in a situation that if anyone doesn't say anything contra- complimentary about a team, where regardless whether we win, lose, or draw. We all get upset. We've been there. I've been where a lot of the, you know, the guy just messaged you. I've been where he's been. I used to fight, well, I fight people when they criticise Arsenal. I used to hate pundits who, was, who used to say, oh, same old Arsenal, not good enough to win the league. It's upset me. But when you actually get to know the game and you, you know, you actually look at the history of the club and you, you actually sort of like want to replicate the standards that have been set by previous teams, you think, you know what? This is cr- constructive criticism. I want the best for Arsenal. So the only way, the best way I can use my um, supporters' experience is to actually say, look, you know what? I'm not happy here. I've seen how Man City United were successful in the 80s, how Liverpool were successful as well, and how Man City are doing it now. And I think, you know what? I support the third biggest club in the country. We're capable of doing it. I think we should be doing it this way. But other fans, they, you know, they're, they're all you know, have their kind of delusions. Like, I'm not mentioning those, but, you know, there's a couple of people at AFTV, both within the same age range, but they're still at that age where, you know, they support Arsenal in a very familial way. You know what I mean? They they treat Arsenal like it's a member of their family. Mm. Like, you can't say a bad word about Arsenal. And if you say anything bad about Arsenal um, in print, on social media, or if you say anything bad at Arsenal on um you know, on new media or, or the conventional media, you're a traitor. You're not allowed. You're not allowed to have a go at the club. That's why it's easier for people who who are the minority to say, you know what? Like me on Twitter, I don't, I don't interact with people on Twitter. I've had enough of it. I've had enough of seeing people, you know, not saying it as it is, and then being the only one who, who won't who won't speak up for the best of the club. I thought, you know what? Go on Instagram where it's more fun. I've got about 15,000 Twitter subscribers, but I don't interact with no one unless they ask me to. I reply to people who interact with me, but I don't actively put things out and say, yeah, great game, blah, blah. I stopped doing that two years ago because I don't want to interact with these people because as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's not a, you know, um, a fair playground. And, th- and that's the thing. There's the majority of Arsenal fans are either back in our tail or... They're trying to suppress people who who they feel are treacherous to the club. To the end of the day, there's a lot of people who think all three of us, are tra- all f- four of us, are traitors. They think we're genuine right. traitors. Okay. Yeah, and the fact that we've been, you know, supporting the club since we were little kids, mm. and we've been to God knows how many games. Yeah, they can stick it up their ass, man. I'm mm. fed up with this. I'm fed up with this. I really am. It gets. Anyway, super chat, Eric man, just watched AFTV player rate reviews from last night. A six or seven four up at her last night. Why can't Robbie be real? Arteta made naught in game adjustments again. Yeah, fact. Thank you, mate. Yes, for, super for a pound note, mate. That's why I'll do anything for a pound note. Family members, the lot, mate. That's real talk. Yeah, I'm sick to death of these channels. I'm sick a star. To I'm a star. Yeah, I think he's the head of the fan base in that on Sky Sports every week. Fuck off, man. Yeah. Seriously, jog on. Yeah, comedy, jog on. It's, it's, that's comedy sketch TV. That's all I'm gonna start referring to that as comedy sketch. Yeah, man. You remember, you remember Comedy Central back when Comedy Central used to have to actually be funny. You know that that's that's what I'm gonna start referring to that as comedy. Yeah, comedy same sketch. in a press conference recently, or bumped into Edu. <clears throat> Just saying. Just saying. Yeah. Well, well, he was on a winner anyway because the other day he had the best of both worlds. Like he had on on one of his channels, he had the hate along, where. Opposition fans, <laughs> yeah, I see, yeah. Hey, um, we're, we're, we're watching um, Arsenal versus Bayern, hoping we would lose and celebrating it. That that would have gone viral. Plus, he's got, you know, he's um, bread and butter, which is the football club. So he wins either way, win, lose or draw. So he can't now say that when people accuse him of, you know, of um, putting a um, profit over and the fat over the club, he can't say, oh yeah, they're jealous of me. They're out of order. That they're trying to suppress me from um, doing my job, and they're trying to stop me from um, succeeding. Well, the things that you you've always been accused of, you went and done it. I've got the three seats on your other channel. You had a hate along, and on the main channel you had a watch along. Plus, you had your fan cams. Both channels are owned by you. 
So you, you can't say you didn't gain, win, win, lose, or draw. You can't say you didn't. Unless, right. unless, unless, unless that was you, unless it was, um, unless I'm going mad, you are the, you are the owner of both channels. Uh, I, I don't, I, I, I've got no time for them bunch of clowns. Seriously. Yeah. They wind the shit out of me and I, I don't want to, them, I don't want to have anything to do with them. They're, they're just a bunch of arse wipes and they get the arse wipe medal from Jez, all of them, because at the mm. end of the day, you know, I'm fed up with them. You know, they, they speak absolute negative positivity. It's, it's just mm. bullshit, man. I just want to say this, right? Yeah, what I saw last night was a team with no ambition, absolutely no direction. It's like, well, we're here in the Alliance. We go, you know, we, t we turn it up, right, and did nothing. Nothing. And I thought, I, I, Matty, I, I just thought, what, what, what have we become as a team? But before you go, mate, smash the likes up. I always forget to say that. But smash them up, people. There's nearly 800 watching, I think. Um, mate, this team, the question I will say, there was no direction last night. There was no ambition. It was just like, well, we're here anyway. We've got six games left. Do you think, and I'll ask you, I'm going to ask you and Kenny and Lee the same question, man. Do you think Man City going out, being beaten on penalties by Real Madrid, do you think that's going to affect them? Because we've got six games left now. Yeah. Do you think it's going to kick us on and say, right, all we can do now is win the Premier League? No. No. We're probably okay. going to draw. We're going to probably draw a game and lose a game somewhere. We're going to drop points again. And that's, and that's, this is where I bet when we back in February, I kept saying the back end of the schedule and people were like, what, what is this yank talking about? And this, we're at the back end of the schedule now. Hmm. It, you, people were laughing last night. The city got put out. They still, they're still in for a double. Hmm. And, and we got fans laughing. Well, city's out. City's out. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and they're playing for a double. And if you think them getting put out last night is not going to restart the fire. And they were already scoring four and five goals before that game last night in the Premier League. And, 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 and Holland's out of form. And that's the comment there all the time. Yeah, of course. Look at the avatar. Look at the avatar. That's what, Go back to that, Jess. Go back to that. Go back to that. Go right back to it. Pull it back up. Look at that avatar. That avatar tells you all you need to know. That tells you all you need to know. Mm. Can, can somebody tell Living Sonny with his dog avatar? Um, the aim of elite football is not to be two points off the top. It's to be top. Mm. Yeah, I'm sorry. We don't need anyone's opinions on it. The predefined metric for success in the football is a trophy. Mm. Yeah, it's a trophy. You get mm. them for winning. You don't get them for coming two points off top. Yeah, you don't get them for coming fourth. Yeah, second or sixteenth mm. is the same shit. You failed. Yeah, there is no progress in football unless you win. That's the progress. <laughs> You've lifted the trophy. You've this, fan base, this fan base is confused with the championship. That's the only yeah. place two through six actually means up. In the Premier League, nothing. Nothing. Yeah. You try to try to just that's the problem with these guys. They've been um, kind of um brainwashed into thinking that we've we've actually made some great um progress over the last few years because you know, eighth, eighth, fifth, and two second places. Well, it could be third because you don't know what will happen. Yeah, the situation the situation is, you know, it's just a complete and utter brain, brainwashing because the simple reason is is that they actually think that Arsenal's a small club that, you know, that West, we're on the same level as West Ham, you know, Crystal Palace, when really we're a massive, massive club. And anyway, of course you're going to make this progress if you spent £750 million. If you spent all that money, 
damn right you're gonna you're gonna have to make some progress because I'll tell you one thing: if you spent a seven hundred fifty million pounds and you and you the best you've got to show for it is, is fifth place. Something seriously is wrong. Something's wrong now because you know we're no longer in a transitional stage. We're no longer in um, trust the process garbage. If you challenge for the league, then you're na- you're now placed in the position where you're seasoned pros. All right. When we changed for the last season, Saka had played, had been a first team for for, for f- four consecutive seasons, Martinelli for two consecutive seasons. So it's not as if these guys, you know, were inexperienced. They had experience of playing in the in the Premier League, which is the most competitive league we know. Next season, after armed with the fact that you changed for the title, albeit falling off the wayside and bottling it, this season. Your 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 seasons because you've been in the ch- um, a title change before. Mick Arteta is a seasoned manager because he, in his second season, he's he's replicated what he did last season. He's challenged the title. Also, no doubt he's going to replicate the fact that you know he's fallen by the wayside. Either way, this process is over. So what when when the process is over, you buy when you're strong. But this manager isn't going to do that, and he's going to come out with an arm full of excuses. You know, ten years down the line, and saying, "Oh, despite the fact him saying that Edu's been great for him, he's going to be slagging off everyone. He's going to slag off the Kronkies. He's going to slag off Edu." He said, "Oh, they never gave me the players I want. They never gave me enough money. Who's who's fooling who? That's the same rubbish we got with Arsene. And if it yeah. was great when we were finishing fourth, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Arsene Arsene through his friends in the media was saying, "Oh." We, we 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 had this debt on the stadium, and we had to, we had to pay off all these loans. I had to sell out to buy or I had to sell Fabregas, Nashville, all these players to Man City. I mean, who buys this crap? <laughs> yeah, but Kenny, well, you're absolutely spot on there, yeah? right? But there's two things I want to say real quick, right? First one, you said like they're going on like with some small little club. Yeah, they do when it comes to accountability even for winning stuff. Mm. But all the way before that, until it's finally we can't win anything, they're making out we're the biggest team, we're bigger than Chelsea, we're the best in the Prem, putting all of our players in combined 11s. But then when you ask for the accountability at the end of it, oh, no, 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 oh, oh, no, we can't have accountability around here, guys. Yeah, he's a a rookie manager learning on the job. It's the third Mm. youngest squad in the league. Yeah, it takes time, guys. It took Pep seven years to win win the Champions League at City. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you can't have both. We're either this great, scary, unstoppable team, or we're not. Yeah, come on. Don't make out we're massive and then not have massive standards. Yeah, because he, you can't. It, it, it don't work. You, you have yeah, to lose have, if, Why are we, can, why are we playing for the third biggest club in England based on trophies? And people well, want to walk about not winning trophies. We're only the third biggest club in England because of the trophies. Yeah, but, but, but the situation is is that if you if you if you accept that one has to be correlated against the other, then you're then you're basically criticizing the manager. <laughs> well, saying you have high standards is basically leaves you nowhere to go because you're basically saying we finished um second to a man city. You can't then say, well. It's no disgrace to finish his second in Man City because, you know, they've got one of the best squads in Europe. They're probably the best team in the world. They've got the best manager in the world. And for us to, you know, get close to them, you know, we deserve a medal. You you can say that if you if you don't continue, you know, use the buzzer as we use, standards, high standards. We actually get, take people take the mickey out of us because we say standards and they use passion. So they, do, they use Ro- Roger Ramchick kind of um you know alliterations to you know when they're writing the word standard uh, standards or passion or you know um, ambition they stay you know go on like with some sort of like characters out of the night you know Roger Ramjet to try and silence us and it doesn't work it's not working but no. when but the other day you you know when they say you can tell someone's personality from the handwriting well you can tell an Arsenal fan's passion from when the game's going on yeah. when they're tweeting Consistently, or you're in a room with them, that's how they really feel about the team. Hey, about hey, the hey, hey. There's a hundred percent truth in that because last night the uh the chair from Luton was 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 uh was on was 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 going to town on a thread 
So me and Lee went and checked. Let's go look at the stuff during the game. And we go down the list, and you see how he really feels during the game. Yep. But after the game, when you call out an issue, now nah, he's got a problem. Now nah, he's got a problem. I told y'all last night. Like, like, right. They're all like this. Mid-game, yeah. they tweet their actual thoughts. Yeah? I see that um, other one, Eduardo Pagan. Yeah? Like, tweeting out absolute nonsense all the way through the game. Yeah, then... Um, then um, he, he was putting out after the game at the weekend. Yeah, he put out, oh, that was a disgrace. There's a lot of players that need to go, and blah, blah, blah. And you've got this other idiot, Rory Talks Bollocks, yeah, tweeting out, season over. Why is the season over, bro? You've said we're amazing. You've said we don't need a striker. We've got 29. Yeah, you've said that we share the goals around the pitch, so we don't need a striker. Yeah, we're only two points off C. How's the season over, bro? Back your manager. Yeah. But what happened is over the next 24 hours, yeah, these these people will spin it back to super toxic positivity. Why are they doing what they're doing last night? A lot of them, especially the bigger accounts, because they're jumping on the wave. They're jumping on the wave because the general consensus last night was that was a shit show in the second half. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. everyone's going nuts. So all these yeah. bigger accounts, yeah, these bot accounts, yeah, yeah. they jump on that wave to get all the traction. Right, and mm -hmm. then what happened is that they'll slowly turn it. Yeah, I see it the mm -hmm. other day. People putting out tweets, people saying on fan cams and this and that, and then saying something completely different the next day. Oh well, you know, emotions were running high after the game. Well, don't do a fan cam then. Yeah, because is that your truth or is this your truth? Which one is it? <laughs> look, yeah? the, the, look, you, you're a date. The fan things like fan cams, especially on the biggest channel, is a fast track to recognition. Is a fast track to um, increase numbers on individual YouTube channels, and that's what it is. You know, you the genie's out of the bottle. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. Well, one thing I say about a lot of these um, fans when they do try to show their um, true colours and their true personalities during the match, there's always been a saying: "Tomorrow is a new day." And when you when you look at when you look at people we've done podcasts with and these positive fans. Everything's rosy the next day because they, they they exemplify that saying, tomorrow's a new day. And I think that's a – maybe I'm like that because no. I've, I've been upset about what what's the game. But come next Tuesday, you see me, I'm running. I'm running <laughs> to the stadium to go and watch the play. I'm running. And if we have a shit show against Chelsea, I'm going to go, Rah. and then come Sunday, I'm running to work to work later to go and watch his play. So Running to work? You run to work? No, 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 no! You don't run to work. <laughs> no, but I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, the the whole situation. Maybe I'm not like that. Maybe I. Exactly no, yeah, but Teddy, you're like you're like that because game. you get to go to live games and it's a passion of yeah. yours, and it has been since you were a boy, right? But you're not afraid to say your truth, mate. Emmy Martin has just made a mad save. They're one nil down, Villa. Like, what a save! Um, but you say the truth. If it's a shit show, you call it out. And let's be real. Mm. Right? I said this on the show the other day. The first emergency medium. I said, why is it every single time Arsenal lose a game, it is a shit show. It is an embarrassing game. Yeah, Fulham, we lost to them, embarrassed. Newcastle lost to them, one shot on target, no shots on target. Mm. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Every single time we lose a game, it is an embarrassing defeat. Yeah, last night was embarrassing. Yeah, in the second half, first half, mate, we were sat on the watch along, yeah? Me, you and Ola were sat there going, yo, I'm kind of happy with that first half. I thought we did all right. Yeah, the chat was lighting up. Yeah, everyone was saying, yo, we were the better team. We've kept them, contained them to literally next to nothing. Blah, blah, blah. And we were thinking, right, come on, guys, let's go. Yeah, second half, just sit back and counter. And in the end, it was like we were 2 nil down. And he just went, he told him at half time, go for it, lads. We're 2 nil down. Mm. Like, what? Yeah, and then we just fold. How many saves did Neuer make in the second half? One from Odegaard. I can't remember another one. And that went out for a corner and he gave a goal kick. We had no shots on target in the second half. We had zero shots on target in the second half. Ah, uh, mate. And, 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 oh. Neuer, and from my understanding, Noya, I think he set the, the, the record for, for shutouts to the Champions League or something along that line. I think he's right there, right on line of doing it. He's, he's, he's doing yoga stretches at the 89th minute. Yeah, he was mm. just doing a little bit of yoga. <laughs> he, he was just doing some little... Little Zumba moves. Jez, you know, the, the, the player, Lee, you can drop, lock me if you want, but just by you saying we haven't progressed tells me your hate has truly clouded the facts. 
I mean, like I said, we don't need we don't need anyone's opinions on it. We don't need anyone's opinions on it. Success, the predefined metric, has been there since we were before all of us were born, mate. You win, you get a trophy mm. if you win, and you don't if you lose. That's the progress. Yeah, we don't need any opinions on it. The trophies are there for a reason. If if that wasn't the defined metric, uh, the metric for success, they wouldn't give them out. And if they did, they'd give them to everybody, wouldn't they? Mm. Yeah. So I don't care what your opinion is. I don't care what anyone's opinion is. The facts and reality are, yeah, the predefined metrics have been set in stone and they mm. are trophies. That is progress. Yeah. Sky Sports era has conned millions of people. But 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 the top four races heating up, guys. Good one. Mm. Yeah, that went well. But but the Prem's the best in the world, guys. Really? Yeah, we might not have a single thing. Do it now. Look, the, the evidence is you could look at Sky Sports and TNT. You know, they they know deep down that you know Man City are two points ahead, and they, they, it's highly likely that they're going to go in the straight and see it through. It's like you know the match was right. You look at Man City; they went in extra time, lost some penalties. Two of their best players asked to be substituted because they got nothing left. Now. We're not good at the because of because of our mental state and because of the fact that we've been exposed as as you know still f as far away from um, you know like the big clubs as as you know we suspected at the beginning of the season. We're not going to be good enough to actually take advantage of the fact that Man City have got their best players asked to be substituted because we shagged ourselves. Declan Rice is shagged. Yeah. Saka is shagged. Martinelli, yeah, I don't Rice. know. Declan even, Rice even is yeah, even when Martinelli is fit, he still he still runs with his head down, and you know yeah. he, he runs like a bloody hedgehog. Uh, but and, uh, but all, all the way mean? through the season, all these channels out there have been telling us, yeah. But Arsenal, they're saving their energy for the running at the end of the season. That's why yeah. they're not playing this ultra expansive that, football, that, guys. That's got to be yeah, that's got to be the running. most. I'm not sure these super chats, guys. Just we see these super yeah. chats. There's a few, quite a few here. Um, Alex, man, thank you for your super chat. Good job. None of you are Scottish. You would all be done for hate crimes for being Arteta out. You would all have criminal records. That's true, that, man. That's a good chat, man. Thank you for that, bro. Thank you for your super chat. Daryl says, uh, Living Sonny is Wynn's bastard son. The dog. <laughs> hmm. Daryl, what Daryl come with. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hold KSC accountable. Our Teta Edu out fact. If, they, if they're not gone, if they're not gone in this summer, right? I'm on the mm. Cronkies next season. Yeah, you said that last night. Yeah, I'm on them because right that, that tells you right there the standard of the football club. The standards of the football club have to come from either the fan base or the ownership, right? Look, and if they both were the, are on the same page and there's no standards, you end up with 20 years without a title. So yeah, they, they were there yesterday. No, you know, you and I know that that. Them being there had nothing to do with expecting them as, a, as part of an inspection of um, you know what's going on in the club. They're there to lend support to the manager. Yeah, you know I didn't watch all or nothing, but the say I tell you what I saw a clip when Josh Cronkey said that he is frustrated and up and angry that people are trying to um, destroy, you know, um, what we're trying to build. That you should the what voices, you, the voices. Uh, on the ass, like they're trying to ruin what's within. within. He generally believes that because we can be as frustrated as, we, as we'd like. But I'll tell you one thing now. As I said on your channel yesterday, Lee, Arsenal um, getting in the top four is great business for the Cronkies because at the end of the day, with the yep. expansion of the Champions League, we got, a, and if we get to say the semi, the quarterfinals, we got, there's, we got at least, was it 10 games? Was it eight to 10 games? Where basically the Cronkies can promote their brand, so eight games that can promote their brand because at the end of the day, these American owners that but um, buying supremacy because of the fact that they're only realized since the World Cup in '94 how big this game is. Before the World Cup in '94, they 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 used to go abroad to Europe and say, What's this game of football? Why what why are they so passionate about it? And and why are these you know Hispanics and these expats from you know Italy and Germany so passionate about this game? Because we've got our World Series, we've got our basketball, and then when the World Cup, you know, you know, was um, awarded to America in 1994, and then 
from the World Cup in 94, a lot of Americans were playing the Premiership, especially goalkeepers, very good goalkeepers, you know, and they're good players like Kobe Jones. You had players like Jurgen Summer. You had, you, you know, you know yeah. Casey Keller in goal. You had all these guys Brad coming Friedel over. Came along after that. Brad Friedel, um, what's happened is that they expanded the game in America. And what's happened is that the big business took it took interest. Hence the fact you've got the MLS. But the real money was the fact that a lot of um, local businessmen can't afford to buy premiership clubs. You've got big, big companies in America who think, right, we're going to, we're going to, you know, buy into this passion that, you know, the, the British have for their game. But these TV rights, oh, my God, this is crazy, man. We've got to get involved in that. And that's what it is, it's a business opportunity. Now, that's that's not, you know, uh, being arrogant. It's the way it is. It frustrates me the fuck out of me, seriously, to be honest mm. with you. I, 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 it gives me a headache. Um, Eric, man, thanks for your second super chat, bro. Cheers for keeping it real. I think you guys setting standards up of being mad about mediocrity shows you're actually true fans that want the best. Yes. And, then, and this is the thing. That's a great comment he's just put in there, right? Because all these people that are saying that we're negative, right? We're toxic. How long would Mikel Arteta have lasted at Real Madrid? About How many of these players would have got booed in that second half? All of them. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? We smashed a stadium down to be like Bayern and Real Madrid. And 20 years later, nearly, we're getting knocked out by Bayern still. Lee, mm -hmm. Lee you, you, last night you saw the gal when I posed that question about Inter Milan. How far he didn't even realize that that's a big club. Yep. They don't. He don't realize AC Milan. Yep. Roma. Bro, Celtic and Rangers are two of the biggest clubs in yep. the, on the planet. Mm -hmm. And they're they, from they, some tiny little country called Scotland, and they're two of the biggest clubs on the planet. Mm -hmm. I mean, everywhere you go around the world, you will find a Celtic or a Rangers fan everywhere, every country on the planet. Yeah, but but you know you know what the Premiership does well. The Premiership, you got you got to hand it to uh, the the CEOs yeah, of the Premiership. They mm -hmm. they done a fantastic. I call the Premiership football's equivalent of the devil incarnate. They are the devil incarnate because of what they've done to the FA Cup. They they yeah. are, and the FA Cup, the FA Cup, the FA are just basically you know, street hookers who sell their sell their bodies for any for a pound. Two bit for a bowl. Bowl. <laughs> it's trust me. The FA, the FA are two bit street hookers who will sell who will sell their their, their bodies for, for, for the right price. And trust me, it isn't very high. You know, the way they let the premiership bully them over the FA Cup is embarrassing. But the premiership, I call it the devil incarnate. But the thing when the premiership do really well, they can they promote and sell that, that product really, really well. And, and and the reason why a lot of people who discount teams like Milan, AC Milan, both the Milanese clubs as well, is because the way the Premiership, the Premiership is built as the best league in the world, the best yeah. football, the most exciting, and it's got the best quality because the best players in the world come over here just for one thing, for the money. In in the eighties, they're going to Italy because Italy used to have the best players in the world, but because Italy doesn't have that pool again, you, what you're having is that you're having Probably, um, what do you what would you call it, Matt? You know, if you were you were at university and you had like first class, you had first class, and you had set, then you had um, two a two one and a two two, yeah. You know, like second class honors, um, it, it's, like, second class. it's yeah. like a division. Or you, you say, oh well, you know, the best players might be here, but the best the best way for me to make the money would probably be go to Premier League. Yeah. So so, yeah. so you look at Serie A that used to be the best play, place in the league. You you basically got um second class honors kind of players hence the yeah. fact that it hasn't helped the italian game because it's the italian national team is poor because they're not getting the best players um you know playing that league plus the best italian players aren't coming through hence the fact they don't qualify two world cups whilst the premiership is seen as this great club but at the, but at the end of the day the thing that shows you know proves how bad things are I'll tell you one thing there. Blake Luke and Town will make more money this season than Inter Milan will make. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because of the Premier League, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and that's, that's why the standard of the Premier League is on its ass. Yeah, mm. because they just come up and just take the money. Yeah, I hope they get relegated. I couldn't give a shit about their little love story. I can't, I can't, I can't wait to see the back of Luton, Sheffield United and Burnley. I want them out. Yeah. Get rid of them all. They're just parasites. The and, and this is what makes me laugh with it. Right? People say, how do you expect Luton to compete 
Yeah, how do you expect them to win? The money, yeah? spend it. Well, me, exactly. Well, let me tell you now. Yeah, Luton Town have earned more money from getting promoted than Girona have in the last fifty years, and Girona mm -hmm. were top of the La Liga for three quarters of it. Hey, yeah? hey go and look at Real Madrid, Barca, and, and uh, Atleti. Bro, and bro, their, bro. Their, their size of club is the equivalent. Go look at the French yeah. league. Brest is is Brest second. second. Brest. Yeah. Lee, you talking like Wenger was coaching there last time Brest was even relevant. <laughs> Brest! Like, yeah. that's like way down the totem pole, you know? So it's like, if people... Hey, look, are, at, look, at the, look at the cup final um, Lever, uh, Leverkusen are in coming up this season. Yeah, they're up against the second or third division team in the cup final. Mm. Yeah. So how comes the second or third division team can compete with all these Bundesliga teams? Yeah, and this is the problem. The money in English football has destroyed English football beyond repair. Yeah, Absolutely. the only way it could possibly be repaired is if all of these clubs take the cup seriously, and none of them will. Why would you try and win two cups in a season? Yeah, when the ma maximum you can get off of revenue is about ten million. If you finish yeah. two spots higher in the league, you're getting that. Yeah, but the big, the big clubs, the big clubs always win the cup because they've got the best squads. So even without taking it seriously or trying, they're going to win anyway. But you know, well, yeah, yeah. But Kenny, that's, yeah, but Kenny, that's true to it. That's very true, yeah. But that's over in that's over that's in Spain, over in Spain, Real Madrid haven't won it. I think Bill Bauer won more more Copa del Reyes than Real Madrid. Yeah, yeah. if you go through the Copa del Rey finalists in the last twenty years, Barca have won four or five, maybe six. Yeah, Real Madrid have only won a couple. Yeah, it's all like Alaves in the final, Betis, yeah. Valencia, Bill Bau, yeah, Mallorca were in the final the other week. Yeah, how can these teams compete? Because they're still going up against the, the Giants in this league. Yeah, they compete because they actually fucking want it. Yeah, whereas in England, yeah, it's, oh, yes, we have to stay in the Prem, so we'll throw that cup in the bin, which is why the big teams tend to win the Cups in England, because mm. even our reserve teams are better, yeah, than their mm. uh, reserve teams. So we can it put a reserve team out of it. It didn't, it wasn't, was it? Let, let, you know, let, let's, let's put it a case on, you know, you think about Arsenal, three cup finals on the bounce, lost to Ipswich Town, beat Man mm. United, lost to West Ham. Yeah. Second division, second division West Ham, second division. Yeah. But in the eighty, in the eighties, there wasn't a gap. It wasn't a shock in the final. Know, I mean, it wasn't a shock if a team from a low, from the second division, beat the team from what the first division, which is now the Premiership. It wasn't a shock because the gap in quality wasn't big. It wasn't a shock that Aston Villa won the title in eighty one. It wasn't a shock that you know Everton, you know, right, right, raised himself from the Phoenix and won two titles and three. Swindon yeah. Town is in two league cups. Yeah, yeah but it's ninety two. Since ninety two, it's since ninety two. Only one side outside the big big clubs have won the Premiership. It's Leicester City. It's impossible for for any club other than the top six. Of having a chance of winning the title, and even then, within that top six, only one team has got a chance of winning it year in year out. It's Man City, Co Coventry City, man. They're up against it at the weekend, you know. Yeah. And it, anyway, <laughs> I don't it's just super chat, man. Snake Eyes, thank you, mate, for your super chat. Ego and the Arteta fanboys are the reason we are in this shit. Fans need to unite, put pressure on the Cronkies, so we can get this fraud out. Now, that's the question I'm, I'm going to come to. Uh, this, 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 thank you for that. That's a great comment, man. That's led me nicely into what I was, want to ask. <clears throat> Mate, Lee, how do we get this clown out of our club? How do we get... <laughs> I, I, I think it's impossible <laughs> to ask the question about getting the Cronkies out, right? Well, so I, think, I think it's very difficult to get an ownership out of a football club. It is extremely yeah. difficult, especially at a club of our, our size. It is very difficult. Look how long it took to get the Oystons out of Blackpool. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? They were throwing tennis balls on the pitch. They weren't going to games. They were outside the ground. Yeah, and he, he was just refusing. In the end, he eventually got, went. But that took how many years? That's Blackpool. Mm. Yeah, so look at Newcastle with, with, with their owner. It took, took years to get him out. So... It is yeah. very difficult to get an ownership well, out. Why would they leave? Though? Why would you? Why would you leave? Why they're not you leave? leaving anytime soon. Oh, when, when, you're, making, when you're making money, and you can, you're, you're taking out dividends. That you cash be a the do, do I look at it right? What, why should you worry about fans you don't know? Who you 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 you're pretty confident 
that a lot of these fans are a sure thing. I'm a sure thing at Arsenal. I'm not yeah. wanted, but you know, come June, I'm, they're going to take another grand out of my account to come longer and renew my season ticket. Mm. I'm a sure thing. Yeah. So, but 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 I know, the minute I I breathe, and and I breathe in, in the club's faces and getting their nerves. They know they can say to me, right, if you don't buck your ideas, it's you're out. And I'll just say, all right, no problem. Okay, I'm sorry, yeah. it won't happen. Again. Yeah, you'll get a little email sent to you. I've seen your online presence and blah, blah, blah. And you can't keep yeah. saying this and that. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you start like, stepping in, mate, you said, we've seen this happen first hand, Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> with other people. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I mean, the thing with the thing, the problem is with football. Let me say something now. In all every business except for football, the customer's right. In football, the customer isn't right. Mm. No. The only way to get this manager out is for the results to drop and drop and drop. If he finished fourth this season behind Unai Emery, yeah, if he finished fourth behind Unai, yeah, I think a lot of this fan base would get one and gone. Yeah, and I think that, and I think that that would put pressure on them because some of his yeah, biggest it's, it's allies. It's, it's, it's a it's a it's a live capitulation. It is a capitulation yeah. which is intolerable. Right now, yeah. that we're, 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 we're identified a capitulation, but a lot of people won't accept it because they don't think there's enough evidence of of um, a capitulation or us being going in regression. They don't see it as evidence. Yeah. Tuesday, but something like that. Tuesday could yeah. very well be the start. Tuesday, it's this weekend. Maybe we've got Wolves away. away. I, I would not be surprised if we don't win against Wolves, Chelsea, or Tottenham. We're dropping. Yeah, yeah, up there, we're gone. We're up. We're gone up there. We're gone. Yeah. We're gone. We're gone down here. We're gone down here. We've gone up there. Look at Saka's body language last night and tell me that guy was really on it. He won. Did you yeah. see Trossard last night? Trossard came on. He just came on and started kicking people. Well, you know what? Yeah. He came on. I don't know if if you, if you go back and watch it. He came on and he turned around and looked at Arteta. It was like, well, where am I going? Well, where, one minute he's in, do you remember? He was on the right midfield. Yeah. At one point, and I was like, why is he in right mid? Yeah. Yeah, I the other day, we had we had flipping Eddie and Ketty at right back at one point in in the game the other day. Yeah, like, bro, this is the thing. These players are looking around, thinking, mm, "I'm not." See, I wouldn't be surprised, yeah, right, like, if there's some of them players in that squad that fucking hate that manager, Reese Nelson, Emil Smith Rowe, yeah, Thomas Park. Ketty will still be trade. A Ketty will still be trade. Probably thinking, whoa, 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 maybe I shouldn't have signed, but I, I'm getting under grand a week, so maybe. Maybe he's all right, but Reese Nelson yeah, but wants to play football. Yeah, Smith Rowe wants to play yeah, football. Yeah, Eddie, right, if you're Eddie Nketiah, how do you feel if you're Eddie Nketiah that he 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 put some Kai Havertz in your position when you're an out-and-out striker? <laughs> not only yeah. that, Kenny, not only that, Kenny, but Crystal Palace was knocking on the door, just banging down the door for you to come play for him. Yeah. And you yeah, decided to stay with this guy. Yeah, Crystal Palace is going to give him 100 grand a week. I wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if Ramsdale don't like him. This, that's so true. Well, Rams, 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 hate him. Rams what about, what about Fabio Vieira? He probably don't like him. Fabio about, Vieira's like five about, games in the Premier League. What about Kimi on these past few weeks? You buy a player for £35 million, pounds, right, Fabio Vieira, and don't bother playing him, he must think, what, 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 what am I here? Especially, especially when we're struggling in midfield, so actually, we, we're actually at number in midfield, and he can't get a game. And not only that, when he was playing every week over in Portugal, yeah, he started. I think he started. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right with this. He started five Premier League games since he signed for us. Shocking. I just Thirty-five million and eighty grand a week. Yeah, um, so it wouldn't surprise me if he wants out. Ramsdale wants out. Smith Rowe probably wants wants to go. Right. Ramsdale, you know Ramsdale, Ramsdale, Ramsdale wants to go. Euros. You're thinking, hang on here. By now, I should be. I should be. I should be um, playing. I should be starting over James Jordan Henderson. I know one hundred percent. By the way, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Sorry, 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 sorry. I know factually that is correct. Reese Nelson can't stand him. He got lied to in the summer. Sign with us, you'll get game time. Yes, yeah, sign on. We'll give you some game time. Yeah, and he can't get a game. I know one hundred percent that is what, fact. What? What, yeah, what, about, what about what about Emil Smith Rowe? He saved his career in lockdown. Saved hmm. his career. And all of the love that he was given, he's given Zinchenko, that love should have been directed to Emerson Smith Rowe because he bailed him out. 
at least give him a go in midfield or something. Do you know what I'm saying? I know he's not always. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's thinking. He, he's probably. He's, he's probably there. His parents are uh, are in Munich or they're watching the series in England. Yeah. My late my lad's fully fit. He can't get a game. That's why I always push for it to go out. I, nine out of ten. I'm not just doing it because I, I don't like the players. I'm thinking, look, there's no future for you. Yeah. Here. Thanks, man. Yeah, probably can't stand him either. Don't don't, don't be fooled by Granite Shaka saying, "Oh, yeah, thanks to Arteta and all the load of rubbish." Yeah, Granite Shaka couldn't wait to get away from him, and he got away from him and won a title. Could win a treble. Fact. Yeah. Yeah. Granite Shaka has no love for Arsenal, though. He hasn't forgiven us for. He hasn't forgiven the fans for costing him the captaincy, and he really loved being our captain. He won't forgive us. That's his. Yeah, it's his own fault. It is his own fault, but I don't know where Arsenal fans are just, you know, saying, oh, we're really up for a granite. Granite hates us. He hates us. Mm. You know, he's never going to forgive. How can you forgive? Because the other day, as much as it was his own fault, how are you going <coughs> to forgive fans that got you into, got you in a state that you had to go and shut your eyes? Because before he did, he, um, before the misdemeanors, we were, we were ruining him in games, clapping when he went off against Sheffield United, against yeah. them. He did disrespect the fan base. Come on, don't forget. Don't forget. He played a part in that 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 one year we went from eighth to fifth. He he. he I mean, from fifth to eighth, he or fourth to eighth, or whatever it was. He played. Remember, he got kicked out of that game. I think it was against Wolves. Was it Wolves? He got kicked out of. Yeah, and, 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 yeah. Got sent off and, and put us in that hole. When we was in December. And that started that whole slide that we had. Look, 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 when, we, look when we was in the League Cup, yeah, and we got a nil-nil at Anfield because we had 10 men in Anfield, yeah, uh, and, and Ben White was laughing at Minamino for missing. The oh, next game, right, yeah. yeah we, all we had to do was beat Liverpool at, at the Emirates. Granite Xhaka fly kicks Jotter in the chest and gets a red card. Yeah, yeah let's not forget Granite Xhaka is an amazing player. Let's not forget right. Granite Xhaka. I'm, I'm not going to gas him up. I'm not going to gas that guy up. Right at the end of the day, he showed disrespect. I, you know, I'm sorry. I'm a loyal, loyal. People can call me whatever you like. Right, yeah. I'm a loyal Arsenal fan. Right, at the end of the day, when a player shows disrespect to the fan base, you're dusty with me. Mm. End of the story. I'll just do this super chat, man. Um, Mars got the vision. Um, first equals Champions League. Second to fourth, Europa League. Fifth to sixth, Conference League. What? Do you guys think of that setup? We had it. We had it in the eighties. We had it in the eighties. Yeah. We had it before. But now it's all about that. How can yeah. it be called the Champions League when you could potentially finish fifth and qualify? Thanks for the yeah. super chat, man. Mm. How you can finish fifth in your league and qualify? How is that a Champions League? You're not a champion. No. They should just call it the European Cup again because yeah. it's not a Champions League. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, Europe, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think the full name of the European Cup was always the European Champions Cup. Is it? It was just. It was just a brief. It was the real abbreviation, yeah, yeah. and then we just called it the you know European Cup. The problem is, is that the minute the problem is the genie's out of the bowl. You know, UEFA can't afford to have um, the big teams not qualifying for the Champions League, and the big yeah. teams can't afford to miss out the money. So. All they got to do is say, right, we're going to form our own. They've been the big teams. We've threatened to form their own leagues since the eighties. Mm. The midweek league without UEFA. So you yeah, might Kenny, look, you look, look at the teams that have won the European Cup. Yeah, right. That have won one. Right. You got Marseille, Stal Bucharest, Red Star Belgrade, Celtic. Villa. Yeah, Villa. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, these teams. PSV. Right. Who's going to do that now? Don't have won it once. Yeah. yeah, they could potentially win it again. It could be an all-German final again, like it was in '13. 2004, mm. and that was at Wembley as well. Yeah, but this is the thing. Yeah, now look at them teams. Yeah, them teams are nowhere to be seen. Most of them teams, you can't, you, you wouldn't say they're European giants. Marseille no. are falling off a cliff. PSV are not European giants. They're yeah, Dortmund, ain't they're still a good team, but they're not, they're not that level. See, PSV, yeah? so PSV, PSV, won the PSV. Come PSV. Through and kick through? PSV won the European Cup as well on penalties against, uh, yeah, yeah, Figuary. PSV. Yeah. They they yeah. yeah, but wh wh where's the teams now? It's the same teams. It's Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, Man City, Liverpool, mm -hmm. yeah, Chelsea. It's the same teams. Where's the team coming through? Because let's not forget, yeah, these teams that we've just listed, 
they were going up against these teams that were elite back then as well. Yeah, because Bayern were elite back then. Lee, yeah. Most of these teams were playing Real Madrid. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> they were playing Real Madrid. Max hey, Fergie at Aberdeen won a European Cup. It wasn't the European Cup, but he won a European trophy. Yeah, against yeah. Real Madrid with yeah. Aberdeen. But, yeah, but that, but that, that's that's the thing now. The problem with football now is is that you know. I don't think I don't think the establishment. Well, that's another one. Yeah, yeah. I don't think the, est the establishment want a com competitive league. They don't want a competitive Champions League no, because no. They, because the other day, if you have a competitive Champions League, then what will happen? They want shock results. Why do you think they got away with the away goals rule? It's because they didn't. They couldn't face yeah. a prospect of a big team getting you know, put out, out. Mm. getting put out. By who was rules. that? Can, who yeah. was that got put out a couple of years ago? It was it was it was uh, it was just a few years ago. And in, in, uh, I think that's how Chelsea actually was. It was, was it was it Chelsea when they won Tottenham? Tottenham, so Tottenham in the Ajax. Yeah, I it dumped Ajax. Yeah, out, I dumped that big. Yeah, and it, and it, it messed. It, it threw the, the whole final up, you know, up in the yeah, air. Yeah, it wasn't like, they, 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 they won an Ajax Liverpool final because Ajax have got pedigree. They won an Ajax Liverpool final. Yeah, they won another um, Europe. Yeah, UK. another Ten Hag fail. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but if, and, that, and that's the problem. That's the problem with, Euro, with European football and the Premier League as well. You're never going to get this elite competitive game because the other day I said it on your show on the podcast, all well, four of us. Football fans in general, and I think the majority of football fans want to see the best teams play each other week in week out. They want to see the best teams play each other in the Champions League. They want to see Real Madrid play Man City. They want to see Inter Milan play AC Milan. They want to see, you know, um, Real Madrid play Barcelona. They want to see the big teams because, you know, that's what sells. They want a situation where they think they're going to get a classic or if they don't get a classic, they're going to get a compelling, um, like a close game. They don't want thrashings. They don't sell them. That, that's boring, seeing Real Madrid beat um, a team for Bulgaria 7-0. They want the elite. That's what the Champions League is going to become. And at the end of the day, you're not you're actually getting man-made, man-made um, competition. You're not getting competition that's true as said, because it's not fair. It's contrived. Fact. I'm gonna wrap we want to wrap this up, God. A couple mm. of comments I've highlighted, which I think are quite interesting. Um this one. Dale says, how long will these Ar Arteta fans give him without winning the league before they want him out? Uh, it might be this, it might be this season if he finishes third I mean, like if, if we don't win against wolves chelsea and spurs the meltdown in this fan base is going to be epic i think i think i think if we lose the spurs just based off because it's spurs and and and, mm -hmm. and the stakes are high you may you may get some people turn looking around sideways but for me i've always i've held this and, I, and i'm going to keep holding it we're going to drop points i can't guarantee you which game it's going to be but i know for a mm -hmm. fact we ain't beat. There's no way in hell we're gonna play Chelsea, Spurs, and United, and not drop some points somewhere in them three games. It's just no yeah. way. No way. Well, it's, it's the common denominator is they're gonna raise their game, and at the moment, when teams raise their game, we've now found out that we can't cope with that. Now, a couple of weeks ago, you know, when you looked at the Brighton result, you're thinking, Jesus Christ. If, if if we get in front and we we can win all our games, then the title was ours. We actually a week ago thought we had one 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 of our our, our hands on the title, left hand, right hand. You you decide, but it, it was that close. But what we found out is that you know we've been um, found out in the last couple of weeks that we're not as good defensively as we think we are. We're not as good as midfield as we think we are, and we're actually not that great on the wings or up front because. When it's when the when teams actually compete with us and actually set us new solutions, we failed. Now forget Bayern Munich. What did Aston Villa do to us? Look at the setup against Aston Villa. You know what teams have done to us and what Aston Villa and, and um, Bayern Munich have done. It's going to be a case now for the rest of the season. If teams can stay in the game in the first half, all they've got to do is the second half is up the tempo, but stay within that shape, and they'll beat us. Mm. Mate, we're a catfish. That's what we are. We're a catfish. We're a catfish. Yeah, it's a it's a fugazi, lads. Yeah, we look good on paper. Yeah, we we play good. 
Yeah, look at look at us a few weeks back when we're slapping teams five and six. Exactly. We were sitting there like, boy, hey, this is mad. Yeah, this is amazing. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. And then what mm -hmm. happens? All of a sudden, we start playing better teams and we get found out. Two wins in the last seven games. Yeah. Two. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, but Lee, Lee, these are teams with forwards who actually engage your defenders and with better enough. managers. <laughs> yeah, and you you got wing you got you got wingers who actually engage your fullbacks, stop them from um, inverting or overlapping, mm -hmm. and you've got defenders who say, right, you Sacra Sac and Martinelli, they're cutting in, mate. But if they hey. cut in, they got some friends. They got some friends, um, new friends um, to kind of um, stop them from. Um, you know, like progressing. That's how they're playing us. Hey, and we, we matter of fact, the clip that we got that we got clipped up on Lee in the bottom hand of the corner, you had you had put up a, a comment and it says Saka's not taking off defenders. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's true. Saka, yeah. I want to wrap this up, guys, because uh, no, go on, Jess, go on. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm pissed off, I won't lie. I'm pissed off with what's happened at this club. Seriously. And um, I've got a super chat. I just need a super chat, man. Mm -hmm. Joseph, man, big up to you. Thank you, your super chat. Big up, mm -hmm. Kenny, Je Jesley and Matty. Great show as always. What's your prediction Saturday? Keep up the great work. Never been converted with uh, Arteta. Fact. Matty, do you want to go there first, man? Prediction? I, think, I think we're going to... Uh... I was looking at this 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 flare up here on the line with with Emery. I, I was looking at looking at that corner of my eye. I think I think we're going to probably draw this game on Saturday against Wolves. Wolves is a team that was one of the, the teams that I initially had before this 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 past weekend uh, with Villa. This was actually one of my concerning games here because I think that they have they 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 have a, a, enough to give us a lot of trouble. Uh, I'm not sure what the mentality of the team is going to be based off of what I saw like the last two or three games here. And it's a case of all the boys going to be able to dig deep and find a way to, uh, to, to, to get it. But history has shown us because the numbers have spoken seven wins in April in five years. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it doesn't look good. I can tell you that it doesn't look good. Uh, can I just say as well, just seeing a quote from Mikel Arteta, our illustrious leader uh, after the game last night, I didn't see this until just now. Uh, we don't have a striker that can score 30 to 40 goals, and we have to live with that. Yeah? Motherfucker, you spent 65 million quid, yeah, on a German giraffe after spending 45, 50 million, yeah, on a Bolivian striker posing as a Brazilian. Mm. Yeah? There's 115 mil. What a prick. Could have bought Harry Kane for that. Oh, but why would he come to us? No, nah, get out of here, man. But not only that, yeah? What happened to we're spreading the goals around? Because that's what he said in a press conference a few weeks back. What happened to Balogun? Florian Balogun. Yeah, did, oh, we didn't need him, mate. We didn't need him. He's no good. He's no good. I, 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 don't, I, don't know, I don't know. Yeah, Dave. I don't know what, he, what, he, what he's looking for. You know, I said, I said, you know. Um, he's looking for to, friends. A way out. A way out. <laughs> like, way out. So, I don't know, yeah. But, you know, I, don't, I, I just look at people like himself, Pep, Klopp. And I think as long as they're right, as long as we have managers like that, the centre forwards are, is basically extinct. As long as we have managers like that, because for some reason they don't they don't want to, you know, play you know play these strikers in their in their best positions. If these strikers don't contribute towards the game, they're dead meat. I mean, look at Harland there. I mean, you know, people were having a look at Harland now, saying, "Oh, what does he do outside of ball?" And you know what? How Pep treat the Aguero towards the end. You may treat Harlem like this. Well, well, you know what? You know what, Kenny? Uh, uh, Pep, and, and me and Lee talked about this a couple couple weekends ago. He's going to see when Pep does one thing and everybody adapts to the way he does it, he t he'll, he'll turn around, he'll change, rip it up, he'll change everything. It would not surprise me if he completely changes his entire formation next year as a second striker to support Holland. And then now you got total chaos. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. Fact, man. Kenny, give me give me your give me your thoughts on uh, your prediction for the game against Wolves, man. We have to win it. We have to win. It's have to win. You've got to find a way of win because we got records to resurrect this season and get back on track for you know what was our our, our main target, which is the league. 
you know, we have to find something in our psyche to think, you know what, here we're all, our best players are, are shaked, but we need to f- get back on track because if we don't win against Wolves, then mentally it's all, it's over. And then we, then we've got to find more strength to do it against Chelsea. who are going to try. You don't know whether Chelsea got the cup final or not. Either way, their fans are tolerating that um, that abject performance they had against us last season. The Emirates, they want they 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 they're going to want to try. And then Spurs, there is absolutely no way those sixty two thousand fans are going to let us do what we did to them last season. We're going to face teams who are going to be at it. We've got to find a way to cope. Tough, tough luck if you're tired. Tough luck that if your head's gone because you know you're out of Champions League. Boo hoo! It's football, mate. Get on with it. Fact, Lee. Give me, give me your prediction, man. I'm come. This. I'm going to come to this final comment, man. Please give me your prediction. We're losing to Wolves. Two one. I can see. Two nil. Two one. Something like that. We'll lose. Mate, they look mentally gone. Mentally Fact. gone. Physically gone. Yeah, we're losing to Wolves. It wouldn't surprise me if we um, if we lost to Chelsea and then Spurs as well. I I I would agree, man. I think we've shagged ourselves up the ass. But this is the last <laughs> comment. These four cry babies, are we? Are we really? Yeah, maybe maybe I, going around to spell babies. I just want to. I just want to fucking say this. You're on mute, mate. Wait, right, mate. Go and learn how to spell babies. Uh, no, it's you. A, yeah, it's not why. Yes, bro. <laughs> No, no name. That's all you need to know. No name. No avatar. No nothing. At the end of the day, man, don't come in here and call us out, right? Because mm. at the end of the day, there's way too much knowledge in here, experience, being at games between Kenny Ken, Lee Gunner, and myself at Highbury at the Emirates. It's probably about fucking a hundred and five years of games. So don't come now in. I've been mate, coaching, mate. How long have you coached for, mate? 30 years, 20 years? No, yeah, no. Mate, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, about 18 years. About 18 years. Mate, yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But don't worry. His don't favorite YouTuber. Fucking call us out. Because his favorite YouTuber is YouTuber's probably streaming right now and he's come here to chat rubbish and he can't spell. Bruv, get off the internet. Yeah. And go and read a book. <laughs> if, you can, if you can even read. Yeah. In fact, actually, if you're on the internet, yeah, maybe go to spell check before you, uh, before you start chatting rubbish. Well said. I can't stand these little fucking arse wipes. To you, <laughs> mate, no name. You can have an arse wipe medal as well. We gotta right. get yeah. We gotta yeah. get it. We gotta get it out. We gotta get a uh, graphic. Don't come in here and fucking call these people <laughs> yeah. out. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking fans. Right. I, I, I won't have it. Right. If you don't like it, don't watch. I don't care. Hey, big, big, big up Tito. He said he called himself no name because he can't spell his own. Hundred percent. Yeah, inbred. He's definitely from Alabama. <laughs> yeah. No, no, he's he, he, he from deep Mississippi. <laughs> Mississippi. It's deep Mississippi, yeah. And Darren Williams in the middle. Matt, Matty, I'll tell you one thing, right? I don't know. In the in the sixties and fifties, me and you wouldn't be going into deep Mississippi on our own. Hell no! <laughs> hell, hell no! no. Hell, hell no! no. <laughs> hey, hey, brother, it's the other places I won't go now at, at night. <laughs> hey, <laughs> real talk. <laughs> hey, if you if if, 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 say, if you if you want to if you want to commit suicide, mate, and someone told you only have a day to live, and you think you know what? Let me see. Let me see if I can give my let me see if I can get, get my family some insurance. I'll go down to the deep Mississippi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's a spot, man. It's a spot. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this up because I've decided I'm out tonight. I'm taking the wife out. We're going to a new restaurant in in town. It's a Vietnamese. Never had Vietnamese food before in my life. Oh, you're in for a treat, bro. Oh, you're you're in for it, man. And I've you're just thought, I've, I've got to get out of it. I've just got, I've just got to get my head away hey. from this bloody football. Seriously, I've had enough of it. Clay oh, you, need, you, 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 you need a break until Saturday, half seven. You need a break yeah. till that time. Yeah, I, I just need, like, chill out. I've had enough. I already have. Yeah. Right? Don't blame it. I'm burnt because at the end of the day, this club yet again has let me down again. I've had enough of it and, I'm, and I've just got mm. to do it, man. Uh, Matty, mate, please shout yourself out, please. Southern Donor here on YouTube. 
Uh, we'll be back Saturday with Lee. Uh, like I'll be a little late getting that, but we'll be back Saturday for the watch alone. And uh, we just coast into the end. We just like a car when it when it breaks down and you get you know you get somebody to push it and you're just trying to coast it into the driveway. That's that's kind of where Arsenal is right now. We just trying to get home. We the cars in neutral. We just pushing going down the street. Thanks, man. Kenny Ken, mate, shout yourself out on Insta. Please. Oh, my Insta is at Kenny Ken 1972. Right now, I'm actually, you know, I really shouldn't be upset about because I knew it was going to happen anyway. It was going to happen in the FA Cup, but the FA Cup is was used to be one of the biggest cup competitions in in the world. It was more gla a glamorous um, game than the Champions League itself. But Premiership always has to win. Always has to win. Yeah, in fact, man. Lee, mate, I know you don't like shouting out your socials, but you, um, yeah, go on. I want you to do it because just do it. Uh, well, I, I was going to do the Liverpool game, but I'm knackered, man. I can't lie. Yeah, we Late don't. night last night, Lee. Late night. Out. I'm going to have an early night. 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 So I'm watching Aston Villa struggling against Lille. They're, they're the only hope, really, to go through in Europe this week um, for any English team. And they're... Currently two two on aggregate one nil down. So hey, don't, don't don't worry though, Lee. At least at least at least at least they play in the the best league in the world. Yeah, man, best league in the world. But yeah, listen, big up to everyone who subbed to the uh, to the main channel. Um, that's on nearly hundred k ninety seven point three nearly nearly hundred k. That's gone up about six hundred since yesterday. So yeah, profiting off a loss. Uh, Lee reacts. Um, I'll be back there on Friday. Um, for some Spanish La Liga. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have an evening off, man. I'm fucking drained, honestly. I'm knackered. I'm done, man. Mm. I'm, I'm burnt. I'm burnt. Hey, I'll tell you what, <laughs> just out of interest, right? I was looking at the menu before we went live tonight. Yeah. This Vietnamese restaurant is proper. Right. And I said to the wife, I said, hey, it's look proper. at this. Have a look at this. They serve up fried whirly grubs. And she went, oh. <laughs> and they're like <laughs> rocks about that long. They're like a wormy thingy typey things. And I said, I'm gonna fucking try them. And she went apparently they taste like chicken. I mean Connor's that so. like mm -hmm. and she said, You're not you're really not, are you? I said, I am. I'll go for it. I'll try anything any once in my life. I said, <laughs> she said to me, Do they I watched because she was fucking <laughs> laughing she she was watching this cookery program she said we go to this vietnamese now okay i was going to do a watch along tonight with the, the um with the yeti but he's, he postponed it unfortunately so, so i said let's just I, I need to get out of it i need to do something all right and she said do they do deep fried spiders i said mate i ain't not eating them, <laughs> not eating them. no chance I'll give they got any the fried fish yes have they got any fried fish? You can fry some fish there. We've got bigger fish to fry in that. No, no, no. Arsenal, mate. Mate, no. Lee, look. Arsenal yeah. got the bigger fish. That's Arsenal, isn't it? Uh, ask, ask, him if it, ask him if he's scared of Arsenal. Or Arsenal ask him if Arsenal's scary, mate. He'll probably say, Arsenal, probably say... Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal in right to get in the ass white medal. <laughs> oh, man. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I'm just done with this club. Seriously, I've, I've just... Kenny, I admire you. I really admire you for your continual support because I've, I'm fucked off of them. Seriously. Oh, you, you know, you, you, the, good, the good thing about it and is that I'll get a summer off from uh, my disappointment. And I, 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 I'll watch a bit of cricket or I'll watch the European Championships where international football got, has got the stage for itself. Where no one's, football fans have got no, no choice but to watch the international football. Yeah, I've had enough. Matty, Kenny, Lee, thank you, man, for coming on. As always, been a great stream. I sorry, to, I apologise to people in the chat. I just couldn't keep up with them. There was like a million people coming in, and I just, you know, with all the super chats and all that, I just. And I'm sorry that um, I actually show the chats because apparently I'm wrong for doing that. Um, but mm. the reason I do it is because when people come into my channel, I actually want to get them involved and show their commitment and show their comments because that's what we do on youtube 
that's why I think we're here. It's it's mm -hmm. not just a one way street, man. It's not just me chatting to Matty, Kenny, and Lee. It's chatting mm -hmm. to you, lovely people that come and support us. So right. sorry for that guy that I upset for flashing mm -hmm. the comments. That's what it's about. And go and support uh, Jess's channel, JSY Talks Football, Lee's mm -hmm. United fan channel. Lovely ladies on there. They're great fun. Um, they're a well, great. We can be playing Leeds again next season. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. They're, they're, they're bottling it the weekend. So hopefully, hopefully. Oh, they're all trying. They're all doing bigger bottle jobs than us. All three of them teams that keep losing when they're supposed to win. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. They never want to go up, do they? Yeah, none of them want to get promoted. Fact. Anyway, people, I'm going to do the outro. I'm out of here. Um, I'm pretty battered with all this right now i won't lie um and i just need some time out and i'm gonna have a great night get absolutely fucking Enjoy battered it, with the wife <laughs> um, eat some shit food that no not shit food but different food different food well, ask if they fry any mutants jez maybe they got some fried mutants <laughs> well i'll tell you what i'd like them to have some fried arteta because i'll tell you what <laughs> you <fine>. prick <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he's, he, you know he's he's got the golden Ass white medal at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Thanks you for watching. I'm out of here. Have a great night, Lee, Kenny, Matty. Enjoy yourselves, and we're out. Yes.